Hey everybody, today I am going to teach you to make your own ham. All you need is pork roasts and my recipe and a smoker and you will be on your way to making ham to impress your family, your friends, or yourself, which is usually the most important. We have been making our own ham here at Clucky Dickens Farm uh, for several years. We do raise our own pigs here, so we make our own ham and bacon and sausage and broths and all that good stuff. So ham is really, really easy to make. It does take a little bit of time, but probably not as much as you think. The great thing about this recipe is that you don't have to use the actual cut of ham, meaning the back end of the hog, you know, the ham there. Um, you can actually use just pork roasts. Now whether these are from pigs you have raised yourselves or pork you go and get from the store, I don't care. But you are gonna make your own ham and it's gonna be awesome. To get started with making a ham, we have to first make a ham brine. And this is a solution that the pork is going to sit in for a certain amount of time and it's gonna make it wonderful and awesome before you smoke it. So let's make that ham brine first. Here's what you're gonna need. Kosher salt, brown sugar, pink curing salt. It has to be pink curing salt. Pickling spice. Yeah, the spice you use for pickles. Molasses and water. Oh, and the pork. This recipe is for seven pounds of pork. For this recipe, we need six quarts of water, but that's divided. We need two quarts of boiling water, which I have turned on in the electric tea kettle. And then we're going to need four quarts of cold water. We will get to that in a minute. Let's grab the other ingredients now. Find yourself a uh, food grade bucket that you can keep all this stuff in that's big enough for the cuts of meat that you're going to do and to hold all the brine. We just use a five gallon bucket for everything that we do. So that's what we're gonna start with. So once again, for seven pounds of pork, this is what we're doing. All right, the first thing you need is two and a quarter cups of kosher salt. Put that in the bucket. Two cups of brown sugar into the bucket. Wouldn't that be funny if I missed the bucket? One and a half teaspoons of pink curing salt. It needs to be pink curing salt, not table salt, not anything else. Pink curing salt. One tablespoon of pickling salt. And a, qu and a quarter cup of molasses. It's amazing that this all mixed together with some water. It's gonna make beautiful ham brine. Let's add the hot water and get this stirred up and dissolved. Working on a nice brew here in my cauldron, my giant stir stick. So we stir this until it's really good and dissolved and then we are going to add four quarts of cold water to get this cooled down before we're gonna put the pork in. Now we'll put some cold water in. Stir that in. Still need to add another container of cold water, but we obviously don't wanna put the pork in when this is still super hot and then have it cool down. That would just be disastrous. Uh, so we'll get this good and cool and then we'll put the pork in. It's a process, y'all. Ham takes time. Good stuff takes time. It's going to be wonderful. I don't, I don't know what kind of accent I'm channeling right now. My kitchen is a strange place, y'all. All right, when you've got that cooled down to your liking, it doesn't have to be super cold, just room temperature. Uh, now it's time to add the pork, so let's do that. I have two beautiful pork roasts that equal seven pounds. So we're gonna put these into the brine. I almost dropped it and then it would have splashed and that would have been in the outtakes. <laughs> I take a little bath, a little ham bath. That's what we're going to do. Y'all, when I tell you that my husband is a very patient man, I'm not kidding. <laughs> so now what do we do? You're not done yet. We have to put something on top of this ham because we don't want the ham to pop up out of the brine. It needs to stay, it needs to stay submerged the entire time that it's doing its thing. So I'm gonna show you a trick that we have figured out. You're gonna grab a dinner plate and you're gonna grab a Ziploc bag or two of water. Let me show you what you do. See how that ham is popping up out of the brine? The first thing we're going to do is we're going to stick a dinner plate on top of it and that's going to keep the ham submerged in the brine. But Sometimes that plate can also pop up out of the brine. So that's where we add these little Ziploc bags of water and they just sit on top and add a little extra weight 
to keep the uh, plate and the ham from popping up out of the brine. They need to stay nice and submerged in their bath time. Now it's time for you to find a nice cold place for this to sit. Your beer fridge works really, really well if you have one. Otherwise, you need to do a lot of planning because this does have to sit in a refrigerator. How long does it have to sit, Amy? Well, class, that's a great question. Let's discuss that. The pork roast needs to brine one day for every two pounds of meat. So this is seven pounds of ham, so we want to do three and a half days of brining. And this needs to be refrigerated the entire time, so plan accordingly. But here's the thing about the brine times. I have seven pounds total of meat in here. Brining something that is one big seven pound chunk of meat compared to seven one pound chunks of meat, obviously it's going to take a different amount of time to do that. What you want is for the brine to make its way to the center of the meat. So obviously if you're working with a larger roast, it's going to take longer for that brine to reach the middle of your roast. Sometimes we leave our roasts in the brine for two weeks, three weeks. It's much better to leave it in the brine longer than not long enough. All of that to say the time that the meat should sit in the brine has really more to do with the size of the individual cuts than the total weight. Making ham is as much science as it is art. Another question I sometimes get is if I'm making a really big cut of meat, do I need to make more brine? The brine just needs to cover the meat, and so go ahead and make that first batch of brine, put the meat in there, and if it you can submerge it and it's underneath the brine, you've made enough brine. If you have to add more, add more, just make another batch. But be aware that, you know, displacement and all that scientific stuff, you don't necessarily need more brine just because you have a bigger chunk of roast. Another thing, if you are doing a larger roast, make sure that your container is big enough that the brine can go all the way around the roast. If your container is so small that the roast is touching the sides, like it's really crunched in there, you're gonna wanna choose a different container because you really want the brine to be able to get to all the parts of the meat. If the roast is shoved up against the side of the container, it's not going to brine as well. So make sure you have a large enough container. All right, let's go to the beer fridge. Now the ham is gonna take a nice bath. We'll be back.